Hi guys, here's your lesson on 7.1 linear and nonlinear systems of equations. So the first thing we're going to look at is solving, sub solving systems of equations using substitution. So for substitution, there's a couple key things that you're looking for. Um, we are looking for an equation to have x equals or y equals. So you're solving one of the equations for one variable. Once you have that, you can substitute that equation into the other equation, and then what you're going to end up with is one equation with one variable. And then you can continue to solve. So if I look at my two equations for this example, I'm going to try to find a variable that's easy to solve for. So I'm going to solve for this y in my first equation, since the leading coefficient for that is 1. So I'm going to get y by itself. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides, so that gives me y equals negative 2x plus 5. And since I now have y by itself, what I can do is I can make a substitution. So I'm going to take my y equals negative 2x plus 5, and I'm going to substitute it in for the y into my other equation. So now I can rewrite my other equation as 3x minus 2 times y, but y is negative 2x plus 5, equals 4. I'm going to distribute the negative 2 into that parenthesis, so that gives me 3x plus 4x uh, minus 10 equals 4. Combine like terms, I have 7x minus 10 equals 4, 7x equals 14, adding 10 to both sides, divide by 7, and you get x equals 2. And now that I know that x is 2, I can use that to solve for y. Now if you look at the equation that I have circled in pink, that already has y by itself. So I'm actually going to take 2 and plug it into there. So now I have y equals negative 2 times 2 plus 5. So y equals negative 4 plus 5, which is, oh, mistake, negative 4 plus 5 which is 1. And final answer is the ordered pair, so my x is 2, y is 1. So that is a linear system um, with, that is a system with two linear equations. Now let's see what we have to do when we have a system with a linear and a nonlinear equation. So what makes B and C different from the previous one is that now you have x squares in the mix. So I'm still going to take one equation and I'm going to solve for one variable. Um, I would recommend solving for the variable that is not squared. So if I look at letter B, um, my x is being squared, so I'm not going to solve for x. I'm actually going to solve for y in the next equation, or in the other equation and then I'm going to make the substitution. So I'm going to solve for y, that gives me y equals, I'm going to add 2x to both sides, so y equals 2x plus 5. And now that I know that y is 2x plus 5, I can take that and substitute it into my other equation. So that leaves me with x squared minus, and I'm subtracting y, y is 2x plus 5, plus 3x equals 1. I'm going to simplify this equation, so I'm going to distribute that negative into the parentheses. So I have x squared minus 2x minus 5 plus 3x equals 1. Combine like terms, x squared plus x minus 5 equals 1. And if you'll notice, you have an x squared there, which means it's a quadratic function. And quadratic functions we solve either by factoring or using the quadratic formula. This one I know is factorable, so I'm going to factor it. I'm going to get it equal to 0. So I'm subtracting 1 from both sides. That leaves me with x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0. I'm going to factor it. Two numbers I multiply to negative 6 and add to 1 are uh, positive 3 and negative 2. So I have x plus 3, x minus 2 equals 0. So I have x equals negative 3 and x equals positive 2. Now if you'll notice, you have two solutions for x, which means I am now going to have to plug in both of those x's in for y. And again, I'm going to plug into this equation since it already has y by itself. So now I have y equals, and it's 2x plus 5, so 2 times negative 3 
plus 5. Uh, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 plus 5, which is negative 1. So my first ordered pair is x is negative 3, y is negative 1. For my second order pair, I'm now going to plug in 2 for x. So I have y equals 2 times 2 plus 5. So 2 times 2 is 4, plus 5 is 9. So my other ordered pair is x is 2, y is 9. And again, this one we had to solve for two ordered pairs because we had two solutions for x. Therefore, you would also have two solutions for y. Um, for letter C, again, I want to solve for the variable that is not being squared. So since my x is being squared, I'm going to solve for y in my other equation. So I'm going to solve for this y. So when I get y by itself, that gives me y equals, let's see, I'm going to subtract 2x and then divide by negative 1. So I have y equals 2x plus 1. And again, since I have my y by itself, I'm going to substitute y into my other equation for 2x uh, plus 1. So I have 3x squared plus 4x minus 2x plus 1 equals 7. Distribute the negative into the parentheses. So 3x squared plus 4x minus 2x minus 1 equals 7. Uh, combine like terms, 3x squared plus 2x, and I'm going to get it equal to 0, so I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides, so minus 8 equals 0. And now I am going to try to factor it. So from here, since I do have a leading coefficient of 3, I'm going to have to multiply my first and my last term to get... Um, to get started with the factoring. So 3 times negative 8 is negative 24 and 2. So I'm trying to find two numbers that multiply to negative 24 and add to 2. I'm going to go with 4 and 6. One of them is negative, negative 4. So if you recall from the beginning of the year when we were factoring, I always set it up as fractions. So I'm going to write this as x minus, and since I divided by, since I multiplied by 3 to begin with, I need to divide by 3. So x minus 4 over 3, and x minus 6 over 3. I'm going to reduce what I have, so this gives me x minus uh, 6 over 3 is 2. And then for this one, since I have uh, my fraction that can't be reduced, that denominator is just going to go in the front of that factor. So 3x minus 4. And now we can solve for x. So for my first parenthesis, I get x equals 4 thirds. Second parenthesis, x equals 2. And then, of course, I want to plug that in to my circled equation to solve for y. So now I have y equals 2 times 4 thirds. Uh, plus 1. So I get y equals, I'm going to go to my calculator, so 2, 2 times 4 thirds plus 1 is 11 thirds. So my first ordered pair is 4 thirds and 11 thirds. And then for my next one, I have y equals 2 times 2 plus 1. So y equals 5. So my other ordered pair is 2 comma 5. All right, so again, this one you have two solutions for x because your x was being squared. All right. Application. So a shoe company invests $300,000 in equipment to produce a new line of athletic footwear. Each pair of shoes costs $5 to produce and sells for $60. Use the calculator to find how many pairs of shoes must the, must the company sell to break even. 
So I have C, which is the cost that the company, or the amount of money the company has to spend. So they're spending $300,000 plus $5 per shoe. And then they sell the shoes for $60 each. So in order to find the break even point, what's gonna happen is I want to find the intersection of these two functions. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my calculator for this. So I'm gonna put Y1 as 300,000 plus 5X. And then Y2 is going to be 60X. So I'm gonna put that into my calculator I'm going to go to y equals, and then for my first equation, I have 300,000 plus 5x, and my second equation is 60x. Now, you do have to adjust the windows, so hit window, and then start adjusting your windows. Just start taking some guesses. Um, what you want to do is you want to be able to see both of those lines in the window. So I'm going to make my x min 0, since I can't really have negative shoes. Uh, my x max, I'm going to go ahead and go with 100. Um, x scale, uh, let's go with 10. Y min, I'm going to go with 0 because you can't really have negative money. Well, I mean, theoretically you can, but not in this, con not in this context. And it is going to be more than 300,000, so I'm going to go ahead and go to a million. And scale it by, uh, let's go with 1,000. And then I'm going to hit graph. And what I'm looking for is I am looking for where the two lines intersect. Um, so the lines didn't actually intersect on my window. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and extend out my x max to 500 and see if that helps matters. So I can see my first line. I can see my second line still not intersecting. Let's make my x max, uh, let's go with 3,000 and see what happens. Let's see, it's a lot of trial and error apparently. Oh, getting closer. I'm going to go ahead and adjust my window again. Uh, I'm going to go with 10,000. See if that helps. So I adjusted my window to 10,000 for my x min. So let me go ahead and write down what my window is because I can actually see both lines pretty clearly. So here is my window. So I have x min is 0, x max is 10,000, um, x scale is 10, y min is 0. And y max was a million. And again, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find the intersection. So from here, I am going to use the keystrokes. I'm going to hit second and trace. And I want to go to intersect. So second trace, intersect. I'm going to hit enter and then enter three times. Enter, enter, enter. And the intersection is at 5,454.54. And the Y is 327,272. So the number of shoes to break even is 5,452 five shoes. That's not how you spell shoes. There we go. Now, of course, you could have solved this problem algebraically, and algebraically what you would have done is you would have set these two equations equal to each other. So you would have 60x equals 300,000 plus 5x, and then just solve for x. Um, but sometimes your equations are not as simple as just two linear equations, so it might be useful to be able to graph them and find the intersection. All right, so that concludes your notes for section 7.1.